Well, good morning. Welcome to Morning Brew with Pastor Drew. Thanks for tuning in. Um, all this week, we're talking about the subject of hope. And uh, we're specifically talking about where hope comes from and how indispensable hope is to all of us, and especially to us who are Christians. And we kind of focused on one verse yesterday as we opened this uh, topic up, and that was in Romans 15, verse 13. So if you've got your Bibles, uh, by the way, you'll need that for our Bible study, and also a good cup of coffee. That's why it's called Morning Brew. There's mine, I think, right there with my Little Brown Church mug on it. And an open heart and mind, as we say every day, uh, to hear and to practice the Word of God. Romans 15, 30. So let me read it to you <clears throat> from my Bible right in front of me. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I like that part where it says that you may overflow with hope. You know, some people are just clinging on to hope, you know, for, for grim death. I mean, they're, they're, they're just hoping and hoping and hoping that things turn out well. And here is Paul speaking here to the church in Rome saying that you should overflow. There should be a, an abundance of hope in your life. May the God of hope. So that's the first place we start looking at that. So hope comes from the heart of God. I want you to see three things in this particular verse. God has been described as the God of all hope. The great thing is we may have a problem with hope, we may lack hope, but God does not. And we should have no lack of hope in Him. He is the God of all hope. He's the God who inspires hope, if you will, in our hearts. Why? Uh, because He is who He is. He is God and we are not. He is omnipotent, He's omniscient, He's omnipresent, He's all the omnis. We are none of those. And so we're absolutely dependent on Him. We don't hope in ourselves because that would be a hopeless cause to hope in ourselves. We place our hope in God. Just as much as the Bible says have faith in God, we are to have hope in God at the same time. Secondly, the manifestation of hope is joy and peace. Isn't that interesting? That when somebody has real hope, not a transitional, transitory kind of hope, not the, the hope that the world brings that comes and goes, oh, excuse me, but the kind of hope that produces joy and peace in our hearts. When we truly have hope in God, there is an abundance of joy and a flooding of peace that can come in, even in the middle of turmoil, even in the middle of despair, of disaster, because we have hope in God, someone outside of ourselves, we can experience real joy and experience real peace. The third thing I want you to note is <clears throat> the secret to receiving hope is to trust. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you, there you go, as you trust in him. That's the key. We need to put our faith and trust in him in order to tap into that hope that he wants to give us. And if we put our faith and trust in him, then we can overflow with that hope that he wants to give us. And the, and the, the conduit, if you will, for doing it is by the presence of the Holy Spirit, who I'll remind all of you, lives within us. Those of us who are believers, the Holy Spirit comes and, and makes his abode in us, lives in us. And so through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, as we put our faith and trust in Christ and in God, then the Holy Spirit himself uh, causes us to overflow inside out, like a, like, in a sense, like a dam bursting its banks, a river bursting its banks, overflowing. That's how we should be overflowing with hope in every single circumstance. Second thing I wanted to see uh, today is this. Hope comes to us by the Holy Spirit. Just mention that, Romans 15, 13, that you may, be, that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why is that so important? Because in our own strength, in our own power, we can't generate that level of hope that we need in difficult circumstances. It's got to come through the agency and the working of the Holy Spirit within us. Imparting hope is part of the Spirit's activity, if you will, for the believer. It's part of his anointing, part of what he does for us. And so we are, we are well covered. We have God the Father, we have Jesus the Son, and now the Holy Spirit indwelling us that can generate that hope by his own power, not by ours. So if you're in a position sometimes where you're involved in a hopeless cause, you feel as if there's nowhere else to turn, and that things just seem gloomy and dark, and, and you know you can't navigate this particular journey that you're on, it's so difficult, you can't see the, 
you know, if you mix a metaphor, you can't see the wood for the trees. Then trust in the Lord. Put your trust and your faith in Him and allow Him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to generate that hope within you that will spring up and overflow. And the good thing about the word overflow is that when something overflows, it doesn't just affect you, it affects other people. And so how many times have you found in your life when you've put your faith and trust in Him and even in the middle of gloom and despair, something happens, something snaps, something changes, and you begin to overflow uh, with joy and peace because of that hope that's welling up within you. Guess what? It affects other people. They see that and, and they are touched by the hope that overflows from your heart and it may give them hope in the situation they're dealing with. So that's how it works. Tomorrow we're going to talk about how hope comes through the Word of God itself and how hope comes in the person of Jesus. So by His grace, we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.